I think John uh, McCaskill has a question. Yeah, I sure do. Thanks, Scott. Hey, Charlie, John McCaskill here. I, I actually did watch this film, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now. It's been a minute, so forgive me if I forget some parts to it. But um, my question is to motivating a group to go through something that's very difficult. Um, in, in my time in the teams, you know, I've, I've had to challenge teams to uh, you know, go through physical challenges, much like you're addressing, and I had a particular way of doing it. But I'm curious how you motivated the other two that were with you to overcome those physical and mental challenges. <laughs> Thank you, John. You're, you're very kind. And I, I actually, it's very interesting to me because people that have seen the film, you know, and I've gone this, through this for years, look, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying that I was uh, uh, always nice to everybody uh, out there because I had one job and that was to get people from the start of this thing to the finish. Um, there were times when I yelled a little too much where, uh, my two teammates I had, and this really is to your question. I had to treat them very differently. Ray, my Canadian friend, you know, quite frankly, he sort of needed to be yelled at. He responded well to, um, that kind of rah, rah, pushing motivation. Kevin, my Taiwanese friend, didn't respond to that at all. And in fact, all it did was cause him to shut down completely. So very much like you as a coach, I'm sure you recognize while you, you kind of in, in when you're having a team meeting, you kind of have to treat everybody the same in that, but then individually, you know, you have to take the time to treat people uh, differently and according to how they're going to best respond. You know, interestingly, people, uh, coaches, um, Law enforcement, military, uh, anybody in a position of sort of authority actually really liked sort of who I was in that film. And I, it wasn't all accurate. I was portrayed a bit as an ass, which is fine. I'm not saying I'm not an ass sometimes, but um, it was a little over, you know, it was a movie. So, you know, with 500 hours of footage boiled down to 90 minutes, if I yelled at anybody anytime, I can promise you it was in the movie because it made it interesting. But um, so the answer to the question as far as I see, and I'd actually be curious back to you what you think, um, is that, you know, on the whole, I had to treat everyone the same, but I needed to take the time individually and pull people aside and, and try to nudge them along and get them to be their best possible self individually because I knew that my sort of overall uh, methodology wasn't going to work for that person. And if I wanted, if my success was dependent upon their success then I needed to make sure they got to the finish line. And, you know, in a couple of cases, I did nothing but like badger the heck out of people and, and, you know, practically call them names for uh, not wanting to continue. Um, and, and I recognize that fear, and I, this, this would be my question for you, what role does fear play in this? Because I actually know that, you know, my two running partners were afraid. They were afraid of people out in the desert. They were afraid of not being able to do this physically. They became fearful of things. And once fear sort of really becomes your driving force, it's very hard to get past that. So what do you think about that? And how did, how did you motivate your teams? And did you have to take people aside individually? Yeah, I mean, definitely. How, and I'll address both of those. Um, one, the, the fear that um, I think that can be a motivator at times. Um, fear of failure, fear mm -hmm. of, you know, being reflected poorly in other people's eyes and their opinion that can motivate people to attain pretty incredible things sometimes. Um, so, you know, it depends on what they're afraid of. The, uh, as far as the method that I use, and, and you, I think you already kind of broke it down, is that you broke your entire transit across the Sahara into two marathons a day for, what was it, 111 days. Um, so you broke it down into digestible pieces. And that's how I motivate people to, to do things that they don't think that they can do. And uh, in, in going through training, guys, 
you know, some of the, the SEAL training that you see on TV, it's the six months training, BUDS is what it's called. You know, some guys get into the BUDS and they think, okay, well, this is six months. Well, that's not at all how to look at it. You got to look at it as one day at a time. Sometimes even what we did was we would break it down to, you know, one block of training in between meals. Say, hey, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you just got to make it to breakfast. You just got to make it to lunch. So we break it down into digestible pieces. And the saying that I always use is, hey, uh, you know, how do you eat an elephant? And you eat it one bite at a time because there's no way if you look at that entire elephant, you, <laughs> you, can't, you can't think of digesting it all, right? I mean, obviously, that's an analogy. I'm not eating any elephants. Maybe you did. Yeah. <laughs>